The term Scot is not as straightforward as it may sound. To many, Scot simply refers to anyone from Scotland. Although this may be true, Scot was also the name given to a cultural and territorial group that occupied the western part of ancient Scotland. Historically, Scotland was made up of numerous peoples, including the Picts, the Britons, the Angles and the Scots, who are also known as the Gaels. In fact, it was the merger of two of these groups, the Western Scots and the Northern Picts, that created the first early Scottish kingdom in the 9th century AD, known as the Kingdom of Alba. The Picts and the Scots had previously fought on the same side down through history, including in 297 AD, when a Roman writer spoke of the Picts and the Irish, meaning the Scots, attacking the Roman forces at Hadrian's Wall. The Scots inhabited the western region of modern Scotland, Errorgoyle, known as Argyll today, meaning the coast of the Gaels. A Gaelic kingdom ruled this region of ancient Scotland and parts of ancient Ireland for centuries, known as Dalriada. This kingdom speaks to the connections that have existed for centuries between parts of Scotland and parts of Ireland. In fact, when you hear the word Gael, you may think of Ireland, and for good reason. Those history buffs out there will also know that for centuries, Ireland was also commonly referred to as Scotia. This was because Scoti was originally the Latin name used by the Romans for the Gaels in general, whether in Ireland or Scotland. As well as Hibernia, the Romans referred to Ireland as Scotia. This makes things quite confusing, as early Ireland and Scotland were both referred to as Scotia for centuries. It seems that somewhere around the 10th and 11th centuries AD, Scotia began to refer mostly to what we call Scotland today. However, Ireland was still called Scotia, or a variation of Scotia, at times. At one point, around the Scottish Wars of Independence in the 14th century, Ireland was referred to as Scotia Major, or Greater Scotia, and Scotland was referred to as Scotia Minor, or Lesser Scotia. References to Scotia can also be found in various mythological stories of Ireland and Scotland, mainly in reference to Scota. In one mythological account, Scota, the daughter of an Egyptian pharaoh, is said to have married Nell, who was the son of a Scythian king, Phineas Farsaid. Scota and Nell then had a son, called Goidel Glass, who is said to have created the Goidelic languages, three of which still exist today. Irish, Scottish Gaelic, and Manx from the Isle of Man. This family and their descendants are said to have spent time in Egypt before fleeing to the Iberian region of Spain and Portugal today to then finally settle in Ireland. Therefore, in certain mythological accounts, Scota and her ancestors are said to be the ancient ancestors of the Scots or Gaels. As with many other origin stories, the question always becomes, where does mythology end and history begin? In other words, are there truly Egyptian connections to the history of Ireland and Scotland? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Please support this work through buymeacoffee.com and Patreon. All the links are in the description below. Through buymeacoffee.com, you can make small or large one-off donations that help support this work, with there also being an option to make recurring donations every month. Through Patreon, you will gain exclusive access to participate in my bi-monthly Q&A, the ability to vote in exclusive polls, and your name will be included in a special thank you message in each of my videos, all for as little as £1 per month. The link to the Patreon page 
of Celtic History Decoded is in the description below. Please also remember to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell so that you're notified every time I post a video. And remember to follow Celtic History Decoded on Instagram and Twitter. If you're interested in history in general, subscribe to my other channel, History Decoded. Thank you, speak to you soon.